Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. In this video, we are going to take a close look at the network utility tool called Traceroute. Uh, it's very simple but very powerful tool and I'm sure as a network engineer, every one of us has ran this tool uh, some some point of time. So let's get started with this. Route, as it mentioned, uh, Traceroute or Traceroute, it's a network utility tool which uses TTL field in IPv4 header in such a way that it helps you probe the destination and displays the network path from source to destination and this picture actually shows you what i'm talking about if you are not aware of ipv4 header i have another video which where i'm talking about ipv4 header and the different fields in it and wh why they are used the ttl is one of the fields. it's one byte a eight bit long field okay and it is used to prevent a packet traveling in the network uh, for an infinite time right um, so you can set a value from 0 to 255 and the basic rule is every hop uh, in the network or every router in the network when it processes IPv4 packet it actually decrement the TTL value by 1 before sending it uh, forward or to the outgoing interface. That's why uh, a packet can travel maximum 255 node right if you set it to maximum 255. Uh, so we are using the same concept uh, in trace route tool. Uh, to trace the network path. Let's go through the theor theory first and then we'll come back to this picture and understand it in detail. So trace route launches a probe packet. So consider this as a probe packet. What is inside the probe packet? That sometimes varies from implementation, different implementation. Like if you are running it from Windows machine or you are running it from a Unix machine. That's why I call it uh, in general probe packet. So traceroute launch a probe packet from source to destination with field initially set to 1. The upstream router picks up the probe and decrement the TTL value by 1 before forwarding it to the outgoing interface. Right. So imagine this, uh, my source, uh, it's I want to trace to the destination. It initially send a probe packet with source uh, address set to himself, destination address to the actual destination machine but what it is going to do it is going to set the ttl value one and then the upstream router when it receive uh, it is going to process the probe and decrement the ttl value uh, by one so one minus one is zero that means what happened at this router ttl becomes zero when ttl hits zero router returns icmp packet type 11 and i'll show you what are the different icmp uh, type and code we are using in general we are using icmp packet type 11 which is nothing but tells you that ttl expired in transit so router 1 replies back saying uh, with icmp packet type 11 that means ttl expired in transit the source received this icmp reply in and what what it gains it in turn it knows the sender's ip address and round trip time to the router also it get to know who's my upstream neighbor at the same time since it's a probe packet there is some timestamps so it actually can calculate the round trip time between uh, when it sent the packet and when it uh, received the reply and this process continues so next time uh, source is going to set the ttl value to uh, an increment it by one that means it will uh, set the ttl value to two this help probe travel one node further because here the ttl is one now here the TTL, so we start with two, here it becomes one, now it becomes zero here, right? So again, this router will reply. So this is process repeat till the time you actually reach to the destination. And that's how yeah, the source get to know all the hops in between um, source and destination. The other process repeats and source keep increasing TTL until the probe reaches final destination. At destination, you get the reply back, eco reply back. Assume you are sending eco request. Uh, so probe packets are nothing but ICMP eco request. Then uh, at destination, since it is a destination, the destination uh, ma machine is going to send eco reply and this completes our trace route process. By default, trace route send three props per TTL, probes per TTL increment. So between source to router one, it doesn't just send one probe. Uh, it sent three probes for each hop. Why it does that? Because packet may get lost in network for some reason. So it want to make sure that packet reaches in the upstream. And also sending three probes help us to calculate uh, the average round trip time. So we have the average latency. And one more advantage is 
sending three packet also reveals if host is sitting behind a load balancer. So in cloud-like implementation, like uh, uh, you're tracing a uh, application which is sitting in cloud, you see that in cloud, the uh, it's very common that your application sits behind a load balancer and load balancer, every time it receive a probe, it, it can load balance it to uh, different uh, uh, be host behind behind it, right? So when you it get three probes, sometime it actually send this to three different uh, host and you will see a like coming back from three different uh, host upstream that that give you an indication that this hop is behind a load balancer. There are other useful information also. Sometime you can also see the DNS server who, who's responsible for maintaining that node. So a lot of other information also it can reveal if you look real close. Okay. Now let's come back to probe packet. Hmm. We have multiple trace route implementation. So in Unix and in Windows, the trace route implementation differs and so on with other vendors. Uh, mostly in Windows, we use ICMP echo request and reply for probe. In, in Unix based implementation, we use UDP. So when I trace from my Mac, which is a, a Unix based system, uh, the probe goes as UDP. But when I trace from Windows machine, I'll show you in demo, it sends an ICMP packet. So ICMP, we know that we are using uh, echo request and echo reply. But for UDP, what happened? For UDP, the trick is to use very high port number, generally starting from 33434. So the destination port it's set as uh, 33434, which is an unassigned port, very high number, and it's highly unlikely that any application on destination will be listening to this port. That's why we cho choose a very high port. So what happened when the probe received the de final destination and uh, this destination machine tried to see if th there is any application, since there is no application, it will send destination unreachable port, that to port unreachable message back to the source. And then source, since source already know, trace route already expected this message, uh, it will know that my trace route is completed. Okay, so when in UDP based implementation, when you see destination unreachable, port unreachable message, that means your trace route is completed. But in ICMP, you are supposed to get an ICMP reply back. So now let's look at the first demo. This is a demo between two Windows machine. And you can see I have IP address of 172.16.92.17 on one machine. And then I have a, another machine where the IP address is 172.16.91.14. I'm going to run a trace between 91.14 to 92.17. And I have ran this trace for you. And you can see that trace route trace rt to this when it is going to the first hop that is my default gateway and further in the uh, path and finally it reaches 92.17 now let's look at uh, the output, uh, output from wireshark right the how different packets are going on you have the data frame then layer 2 header layer 3 header and underneath you have icmp right so source is 172.16.91.14 destination is 92.17 field what i'm interested in ttl is one and protocol denoting icmp right so it started with ttl1 and icmp uh, and then you can see source and destination within icmp what is this this is a eco, uh, eco request packet okay so it may uh, go to the first half then what happened i'm going to get a reply back from 91.1 to 14 and it says ttl exceeded right let's expand this packet and see what i'm seeing here again the my first half router rep, uh, replied and it is setting the uh, icmp type 11 says ttl exceeded right so my source know that this has happened now let's see what it does next so what is happening here ttl field increased uh, incremented by one that means make a ttl2 then send a, another ICMP eco request between source and destination. You'll see this process will continue and you will keep on getting TTL uh, exceeded until finally you are going to get port unreachable. So in this what happened, the, my destination replied and it replied with uh, port unreachable. This is eco reply message coming back from destination. Look at this packet, okay? So ping reply. That that's happened th three times in a row, and 
so you can see the echo request but when i send the ttl4 that time it reaches the final destination and we receive a reply back the source and destination got flipped that means now the source is 92.17 and destination is 91.14 and we are getting a icmp reply echo reply back so this is how it works uh, in windows no uh, upper layer header nothing just icmp pure icmp now let me show you uh, udp based implementation so what is happening here i am tracing uh, application in the cloud um, a website and here you can see what is happening is it's a udp based implementation that means my local address this is my uh, home address 192.168 because i'm sitting behind the NAT. you can see and what is different here is internet protocol ip then you have uh, protocol as udp so my uh, i'm sending a udp packet between my source and destination and how my udp packet looks like you can see that i have a source port again an assigned high number port but destination port as we mentioned start with 334 and so that is taken 33456 this time and that's how i send a udp packet uh, with different DTL values starting from one and I keep on getting replies uh, from upstream nodes that DTL exceeded uh, Finally, I am supposed to see port unreachable message and this one you can see here if I expand my ICMP You can see this is destination unreachable port unreachable port because this is a, this reached to the final destination you can see this is my final destination uh, so my destination now replied destination became source and it replied to me uh, with the icmp error message which is port unreachable because there is no, um, no no one at the destination listening to that port what i am using for my trace route so this is how it works uh, i hope you understand both the uh, implementation windows based implementation and mac based implementation what are the difference but in nutshell udp works in the similar way we use um, ttl field intelligently at the same time we get icmp mm. uh, pack, uh, use icmp packet to get the probe reply back so i hope uh, it makes things clear for you and uh, if you want to know more about icmp you can always search icmp in wiki this is a very interesting page it has all the details and if you are confused about what i was talking in terms of icmp type and code you will find this table very useful so we are using icmp eco reply and icmp eco request request reply and this is the field type 11 which is ttl exceeded ttl expired in transit so i hope you find this video helpful thank you